record. So far, we looked at the agnathans or the jawless fishes. Um, they were the hagfishes and the lampreys, the lampreys. So they lacked some of the features that our nasostomata have. In particular, they lack the um, four limbs of the tetrapods. So the first tetrapods are the amphibia. And what's really interesting about the amphibians is that um, they are the first animals to migrate onto land. They're the first animals to migrate onto land. Um, but, but, and this is very important, they're not completely independent of water. They're just not independently, com um, completely independent of water, the amphibia. The first land birds, they include your frogs, your toads, your salamanders, but their reproductive stage is still very rooted in, no, that's not a good word, is it, <laughs> to use, <laughs> is still dependent on water. Yeah, so here are the larvae, the tadpoles. Hang on, sorry, oops. Tadpoles. And the tadpoles have um, gills. They have the postanal tail for swimming purposes. Um, so there's classifications now that are a little bit different. I should probably write those down. The tetrapods. I just said frogs, toads, and salamanders, but uh, they're, they're divided into clades now. Let me give you the clade names. Is there, they're named a little bit differently. Urodela, that's the tailed ones. So those are the salamanders and newts. Rodela. The anura, those are tailless. And those are your frogs and toads. And your apoda, those are legless, legless ones. And those are your Sicilians, they're called, which kind of look like worms, but it turns out that they're an amphibian. And um, they, live, they live everywhere. except the Antarctica. Their skin uh, breathes. They depend on their skin for breathing. And, but they have rudimentary lungs. They do have rudimentary lungs. But their skin is very interesting. So they have, um, what's it called? Pulmo, 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 I think it's pulmo cutaneous breathing. So they breathe through their skin, but they also have rudimentary lungs. So they do need to be in a moist environment because of the skin breathing. So moist environment. is important for amphibians. So they're really tied to water in a lot of different ways. Yeah, so the tadpoles have uh, gills, they have the tail, um, but they don't have any limbs. They don't start getting those until they metamorphose. 
metamorphose. They metamorphose into the land form. So they grow legs. It's quite gradual. It doesn't, it doesn't happen right away. Uh, the jaws become larger. Um, because they're carnivores and, and, sorry, and their digestive system changes as well. <laughs> so the digestive system changes for eating uh, land kinds of insects that they eat. Um, they develop lungs as they metamorphose. Yeah. So they're very, very tied to water though for reproduction. So uh, not unlike plants, so plants evolved from water to land. The first land plants are mosses. And mosses must have water to reproduce, just like amphibians must have water to reproduce. Uh, the eggs aren't internal. The eggs are outside. This is a male and female. They're, they're amplexing, it's called. That's where the male squeezes the eggs basically out of the female and then uh, drops sperm over top of the eggs to inseminate them. So the first amphibians would have had to have um, had modified appendages in order to be or modified not only appendages, but modified uh, body uh, structures in order to live on land. So it's thought that um, the lungfishes perhaps developed skeleton reinforced appendages and the, and the legs moved below the body in order to support body weight on land. But in order to be completely independent of water, uh, animals had to develop an impermeable outer covering. In this case, the covering is scales. Yeah, so reptiles have more terrestrial adaptations than amphibians have. waterproof scales, and they have a shelled amniotic egg. So from now on, the animals that we talk about are called amniotes because they have a specialized egg. Uh, reptiles are ectotherms, so they warm their body by absorbing heat from the environment. They don't have uh, internal body um, regulation. But to lay a shelled egg, there must be internal fertilization. So that is another development that must have happened in order for animals to live entirely on land. And indeed that is what happened with reptiles. So the extant reptiles, uh, the tortoise, the lizard, the king, the king snake, sorry, the alligators. So let's see, where can I write this? Reptilia. Okay, so I'll write it here. I have some room. Uh, what do we have with reptiles? Reptiles are uh, tetrapods. No. Tetrapods. So they have four limbs. Two limbs in the front, two limbs in the back. Um, what else do they have? A key adaptation. 
They have the scaly skin. We've already talked about that waterproofed scales. And they have four clades. So this is the classification these days. The clades are the crocodilia. That's the most ancient clade. Uh, about 84 million years ago is when they arose. And those include your alligators, Um, your crocodiles and your caiman. So alligators, there's really only two alligators. There's the uh, American alligator and the Yangtze alligator that lives in the Yangtze River. Uh, those are the only two. So the crocodilia, uh, where was I going with that? Yes, Venodontia. No, that's wrong. It's spelled Svenodontia. So the Svenodontia, there's only one genus, the Tuataras. And they're, they're found in New Zealand. That's the only place that the tuataras are found. The squamata, the squamata, um, and those include your lizards and snakes. They're a very, very large group, a very large group. Um, and the testudines, The testudines, which are your turtles and tortoises. Turtles are aquatic and tortoises are land animals. Yeah, so there are some examples. This is a desert tortoise on the upper left, um, a lizard, upper right, a king snake, a lower left, and an alligator on the lower right. So a sea turtle. So they are characterized by this shell. So turtles have, um, it's a bony or a cartilaginous, shell. Yeah, so it has uh, uh, two surfaces. It's got um, a carapace and a plaster on the ventral surface. It develops from the ribs. A banded gecko, an emerald tree boa. Watch out for that one. Dinosaurs were the most diverse reptiles to inhabit land. And dinosaurs, um, they may have been endothermic. There's some evidence to show that. Um, they, however, disappeared at the end of the Cretaceous. <laughs> Sorry about the writing. Something about the pencil keeps changing. And so I can't put my hand on the screen now. Anyhow, um, the dinosaurs are reptiles and the dinosaurs, like um, branches of the dinosaurs gave rise to the birds on one hand and mammals on the other hand. So there's, there's really a really, really, really great, great show David Attenborough put on just a few years ago called First Life. And I think I can show that to you because I've seen it on YouTube. So I'm going to check out the YouTube uh, version and see that, um, that it's a good quality so I can show it to you. 
yeah, so this is um, in this lecture is still called the class AVs, but I think nowadays they're not. I don't know what the clade is now. I'm not sure what the clade is called, but um, we used to call them AVs. Yeah, they have scales. So uh, I'm going to show you a documentary that I made about the Pacific Great Blue Heron. And you can see the scales on their legs. They have amniotic eggs, like other reptiles. This is one of the first uh, feathered dinosaur, the Archaeopteryx. That shows that quite clearly that those are feathers. But it has the long tail of the reptile. Um, so it has a lot of the reptilian features. But birds are characterized by uh, wings, of course, feathers, and they, they are also endotherms. Um, they have hollow bones for flight, and they have a keratinized beak. And there's many, many versions of birds. This one here is the Pacific Great Blue Heron that I'll show you a documentary on. These are flamingos, and this is, I forget, a gull of some sort, I think. It has a very gull-like head. Yeah. So these are um, snow geese, and if you get a chance this winter, take a look in Ladner. Uh, go out there in about late November and December, and you'll see thousands of snow geese because they migrate across the world. And next term, uh, we're going to look a little more closely at the physiology of birds. They have a very interesting way of breathing. So they save energy by having um, air go through their lungs in one direction only. They don't breathe in and out through the same place. They breathe in one place but the air just flows through and oxygen is, is derived from it more efficiently. And they have a four-chambered heart. And, you know, being an endotherm and having a four-chambered heart, it used to be thought that birds were more closely related to mammals, uh, but it turns out that they're not. They really are uh, flying dinosaurs, essentially. Yeah, some are flightless. So some have lost their ability to fly, but they're wings are still very useful, especially in the case of penguins, for swimming. So that brings us to the end of the birds. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm just going to turn that off.